The American Space Agency, NASA, shared a picture on its Instagram of pepperoni storms on Jupiter, a video that showed a literal pizza with pepperoni looking storm on Jupiter's North Pole. The image is taken in the infrared by the orbiting spacecraft Juno and it shows swirling storms that climb high up above Jupiter's upper atmospheric layers. They also vary in temperature from the surrounding regions, although everything is well below freezing point in these parts of the solar system. The visual shows a large part of Jupiter's North Pole containing over 15 different storms with an identifiable cluster of storms in the North Pole that form an octagon shape. Jupiter has all kinds of winds and storms and its great red spot is even larger than the planet Earth. The entire planet's atmosphere is made up of zones and belts which are bands of different types of winds and towards the poles there are cyclonic groups. In this video, we'll take a look at what this pepperoni storm image is, how storms form on Jupiter and other gas planets, and how both cyclones and anticyclones thrive on the solar system's largest planet. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Jupiter is made up of gas. It doesn't have a solid surface. Instead, the more and more we go down into the planet, the thicker and thicker the air gets until it becomes the consistency of a viscous fluid and then we reach a layer of liquid metallic hydrogen and then the solid core of ice, rock and metal. The rocky core is estimated to be about 30% of the entire planet and the liquid metallic hydrogen layer spans about 80% the radius of the planet. The rest of it is the atmosphere. In the deeper layers of the atmosphere, droplets of helium and neon rain down into the lower atmosphere moving these elements through the layers of clouds from the top to the bottom. These clouds are the deepest atmosphere of any planet in the solar system, having a height of over 5,000 km. And these clouds are primarily composed of ammonia. They are affected by circulation patterns and turbulence and exist in the form of bands around the planet. These bands run parallel to the equator and are bounded on both sides by powerful atmospheric winds known as jets. The lighter atmospheric wind bands are called zones and the darker ones are called belts. Zones, the lighter colored bands are upwellings or rising up of air while the darker belts show descending air. Between a light and a dark band is a wind jet which bounds a band on either side. Moving away from the equator, jets that flow eastward are found in the transition from zones to belts when moving from the equator towards the pole. And westward jets are found at the transition from belts to zones when moving away from the equator. How these bands formed is not known just yet, but we do think that the colors are because of ultraviolet exposure of sulfur, phosphorus, carbon and ammonia. These colors are more prominent in the darker bands, which is why they're darker naturally, and consist of descending winds in these bands. Now, all of this is just the basic physical outward structure of the planet. Within these complicated atmospheric systems are even more underlying complicated phenomena. The atmosphere is full of vortices or rotating winds or cyclones. The winds in the zones or the lighter bands are anticyclonic, rotating clockwise, and the ones in belts are cyclonic, rotating anticlockwise. The anticyclones have a center that is high pressure with cold air on top of warm air. They are typically visible as bright white ovals. Cyclones have a low pressure center. They are smaller and darker and often more irregular. They have warmer, less dense air at the top. Cyclones and anticyclones, but especially anticyclones, can last weeks, months or even years. There are two specific anticyclones that are bigger and different from the rest that we can observe from Earth. And those are, of course, the Great Red Spot and the new Oval BA. The Oval BA is also called the Red Spot Junior. The Great Red Spot, or GRS, has been rotating and spinning for about 400 years now 
an oval BA formed only in the last two decades. These storms or vortices occur in the tens to hundreds and they can move within the zones and belts that they are confined to. They often merge if they come close to each other and in fact Oval BA was formed by the merging of multiple storms. They can also cluster and they do so primarily at the poles. The North Cyclone group has nine cyclones with a large one in the center and eight storms surrounding it. At the south pole of Jupiter, there is a center vortex surrounded by six storms, five large and one small. These cyclones are called circumpolar cyclones. There are more of them in the north, but the ones in the south are much bigger. So there are only five and they tend to remain in a more stable pentagonal structure. The ones in the north form an octagonal structure. Such storms exist on Saturn's North Pole too. Here on Saturn, there's the hexagon, a cloud pattern that is actually hexagonal in shape. The size and shape of the storm has remained consistent, although the color has changed over the past few years on Saturn. It went from mostly blue to now a mostly golden color due to changes in Saturn's season. On Saturn's moon Titan also, there have been polar vortices and astronomers have imaged large single storms. The best eye in the sky right now to study Jupiter is Juno, which is NASA spacecraft and is in orbit around the planet. Juno has various payloads that help understand the planet, including ways to detect gravitational anomalies that are caused by mass concentration on the planet. What we've learned from Juno's readings over the past few years is that many of Jupiter's storms are actually much deeper than we thought. The Great Red Spot actually extends all the way down to 350 kilometers. That's a 350 kilometer wall of winds spinning for over 350 years and able to encompass at least three Earths. If storms go this deep, they extend well below where sunlight reaches and below where water condenses. Jupiter's belts and zones also go deep, much deeper than expected and much deeper than the storms. Juno's data shows that they in fact extend all the way down to 3,200 kilometers. Juno also discovered that ammonia moves up and down with the jet streams, likely contributing to color variations in the bands. When it comes to cyclones and anticyclones, Juno also found that Jupiter cyclones all interact with each other, causing them to oscillate about and remain in some form of equilibrium with respect to each other. The cyclones also want to move towards the poles, but they get pushed away by existing cyclones and anticyclones in this region. 15 years ago, something called the Great Cold Spot began to form in the North Pole of Jupiter. It is today 24,000 kilometers across and 12,000 kilometers wide. And this region is 200 degrees Celsius cooler than the surrounding air. It likely formed because of charged particles from the volcanic moon Io, which would have interacted with Jupiter's strong magnetic field and redistributed heat flow leading to the formation of the great cold spot. Near the great red spot is also the little red spot, the baby red spot, which was followed by the great red, and now we have the oval BA. We can trace the formation of oval BA back to the late 1930s. There were first dark features called AB, CD, and EF. And then they became white colored ovals called FA, BC, and DE. Then the ovals BC and DE merged, forming the oval BE, and then FA merged with it, forming oval BA. It was white when it formed and now Oval BA is red. It has been turning red and eventually has reached the same shade of red as the Great Red Spot. Why this storm turned red is not yet fully understood. What we know is that when gases from deep within Jupiter's atmosphere are exposed to sunlight, they change color. Astronomers speculate that Oval BA would merge with the Great Red Spot, but so far nothing of the sort has happened. Juno is expected to give us more data and is expected to function until September of 2025 at least, by which time astronomers think that Jupiter's radiation would have damaged it significantly enough to render the mission over soon. 
Until then, Juno Cam will continue to take these stunning pictures of Jupiter and their corresponding measurements, allowing us to understand the planet much, much better.